right, so my name is Wes Johnson. I'm co-lead on uh, the CORE project, um, and I'm going to cover a few things about how we've put together MQTT namespaces for CORE. So um, I think everybody's seen a diagram very similar to this. So uh, this is a basic uh, IoT MQTT system topology with a uh, single device. Obviously, normally there would be a lot more. Uh, and they're connected to a broker in some way. Um, so we're just focusing on MQTT here. Uh, MQTT is really good um, for push events, uh, but oftentimes there are back-end applications that may require request-response interactions between, uh, say, a console or some REST APIs and need to get all the way to the device uh, potentially to update software, maybe to send a signal to an actuator, um, and then also want to get a response back uh, fairly quickly. Um, <clears throat> so MQTT is not exactly ideal for that. Um, unless you design a namespace appropriately so you can do those types of interactions. So I think a lot of this is pretty obvious, um, but uh, there are uh, many times when this is necessary. So. Say in the event that you want to send updates to many devices that exist out in the field, um, when you send out that update, you want to know if that actually got to the devices. Um, and if there was an error, uh, what was the error? Um, and uh, that allows you to update your backend with um, uh, the appropriate information to either resend the event uh, or maybe to send a technician out to uh, fix the problem. Um, so the same applies for configuration updates, uh, also for um, uh, control of actuators, um, potentially requesting information from the device, uh, so what its current configuration is and that type of thing. Um, also other things when designing a topic space you need to consider, things like an extensibility, uh, potentially uh, in a multi-tenant environment you need to separate um, individual customers, uh, you also need to be able to address specific devices. Um, and then potentially support multiple applications. In the case of Quora, because it's OSGI based, um, you want to be able to send MQTT messages to individual applications that are running on that device. So what we did in Quora is we separated uh, what we call data topics from control topics. So a data topic would be one of those things that you would normally push to the cloud. Uh, so it could be, say, a temperature reading or a people counter count, um, as we did here uh, at EclipseCon. Um, and the way we did that is with an account ID and then a client ID. So that's an MQTT client ID that um, references a specific device. Uh, for control topics, um, these are things where you might have those uh, request-response interactions. Uh, so in the case... Um, uh, or by separating those, it allows you some additional granularity on um, the access control to those specific topics. Um, so you may, for example, not want a device um, be allowed to update another device. Instead, you only want those backend applications to be able to do that. So by separating those, devices can still publish uh, on their data topics, but not necessarily publish on topics that would send a command to another device. So this is um, uh, how it's structured in Quora today. So it's REST-like. You'll notice the highlighted verbs there that are REST-like uh, to perform operations um, uh, somewhat similarly to how CoAP does it as well. Um, also, you'll notice that I snuck in an application ID there. And so within Cura itself, uh, individual applications can get their own unique requests. Uh, so as an individual OSGI app application, um, uh, those are separated out by uh, the internal workings of Cura. Uh, and then similarly, on the response side, um, the topic's slightly different. We send the response to the requester client ID um, the verb is reply in this case, and also we have a request ID, so if, say, multiple requests get sent to a device that aren't responded to, um, uh, they can be um, referenced individually. 
So this is an example flow. Um, so we have a requester. Uh, in this case, it might be a command sent from a uh, web console. Um, so initially, when uh, Cura starts, it would subscribe on um, the specific topic that it expects to service requests on. So in this case, we're going to service a get request for the configuration. And in this case, we're providing the configuration that's stored in config admin for all of the OSGI services that are um, in uh, the OSGI framework. So here, um, to generate the request, the requester has to specify its own request ID uh, and also generate some unique um, uh, uh, request ID so um, that can be uniquely identified. Uh, these actually get passed in the payload of the request to um, the um, device. So here um, we just send the messages or send the single message that includes that payload uh, with the request client ID and the request ID. Uh, and so that allows the responding device to reply on the correct topic that has been subscribed on by the requester. So in order to generate the response, uh, we would get the information that was in that request. So in this case, it's an XML file that represents the um, config admin configuration for all of the services or components in the framework. Um, in case there was an error, you might send an exception or a stack trace back. And then we also have a required response code that I'll cover in uh, just a minute. And then we simply send back the response on the appropriate topic. Um, in this case, we got the manager one and also the ID from the payload of the request itself. Uh, and then we send our own payload back with whatever information was requested. So these also should look familiar. So we used HTTP like uh, response codes. Um, and so that's a required field uh, for a response. Uh, so the requesting client um, uh, knows how the device handled it. Uh, also, there are uh, optional uh, fields, and there are also application-specific fields. So in the case of requesting the configuration uh, admin, um, uh, or the configuration of the device, we would also obviously include that as a separate metric here. So to make this a little bit simpler in terms of coding, uh, we utilized what uh, in Cura is the cloud client. So this is a wrapper around um, uh, the Paho client library. Uh, and Marco mentioned some of the features earlier uh, about um, the store and forward capabilities of it uh, in case of loss of network connectivity. Uh, but one of the main purposes is to act as a single MQTT client for the gateway as a whole. So it provides an OSGI service that allows individual applications um, to publish through the single MQTT client on the gateway device. Um, but in addition, we uh, provide what's uh, called the Cloudlet class, which is an abstract class, which can be extended. Uh, and then by simply specifying your application ID, there are callbacks associated with each of those different uh, request types. So you can see it's pretty simple. You just specify your application ID in the constructor. And then um, there are these five class or methods that can be uh, overridden, which um, if the requesting client publishes the request on the appropriate topic for this device and for this application ID, then these callbacks get uh, called and you can handle the request appropriately. All right, any questions? So that's really application specific. Um, when you as a requester uh, send that message, um, how you want to handle a timeout is up to you. So um, obviously you know when you sent it, if you want to wait a certain period of time and then, um, but there's nothing built in. No. Yeah, so um, certainly. Um, so that's the reason we have a separate uh, initial token. 
uh, for control topics versus data topics. So um, we don't have any hard requirements other than those first two. Uh, and in terms of on your broker side, how you want to control access is kind of up to you. Right. Any others? All right. Thank you.